That's what I imagine like a, a noir jazzy appeal would be. Ah, hi, dee ho, everyone. My name's Mr. Fruit, and welcome back to Battlefield 5. Thanks again to EA for sponsoring this video. If you missed my previous video on Battlefield 5, I discussed some of my hands-on time with the game while at EA Play, and today we'll be taking another dive into this chilly gameplay. I say chilly because the map is covered in snow, and also, my gameplay might leave you with a chilling sensation. It's, it's up for interpretation as to whether or not that's a good thing. But I will say this. You go into a lobby full of Sweaty McGee 1 through 63 and see how you do, okay? Now let's cover the classes first and foremost. Nothing too revolutionary here. More of what you know from Battlefield. We have the Assault class, which in this demo had the STG Assault Rifle and my favorite item to wield, the Rocket Launcher because explosions. I ended up using this assault class the most because the assault rifle felt like it had the most consistent short to medium range of the weapons at our disposal. And also, like I said, I like blowing things up and not sucking. I seem to get the most kills with this class. So the choice was obvious. Hard to say whether or not the STG is really good or if it's just the small slice of content we got to play. I found at medium to long range, I was forced to feather the trigger, much like you would have to do if you were ascending a love letter via Morse code. That was actually Morse code for nice metaphor, Mr. Fruit. Yeah, well, you know. The recon is your resident sniper. That is to say, he snipes. There's only so many ways to say sniper, but according to thesaurus.com, the synonyms for sniper would actually be assassin, sharpshooter, killer, marksman, and markswoman. After all, it's 2018 and we must include all shooters of all types. Women in Battlefield? Whee! Seriously though, you, you snipe and have some tools to allow you to spot enemies for yourself and your team better, for lack of a better way to put it. I did enjoy sniping. I was a lot better at getting sniped, though. They were to hand out medals for best sniper and best sniped. I'd like to think I'd win one of those. The medic is... Uh, okay, seriously, do, do I have to go through all of these? This class is literally called medic. What else could I possibly... What, 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 what do you mean you're going to fire me? Okay, okay, jeez. I know Olive is ready to take over the channel in my absence, and Lord knows everyone wants that, so I'll do whatever I need to do to keep this gig. <sighs> Anywho, the medic wields an SMG, or a semi-auto rifle, and goes around throwing health pouches to the nearest wounded ally. Low health? Not anymore, thanks to the doc. The SMG felt good up close, and horrible at other distances. <gasps> So you're saying it acts just like an SMG? I am, I'm just trying to do my job, guy. So get off my back. The semi-auto felt more useful on this map, but I think my favorite part was holding out my hand, gasping for air every time I was about to die, using every last ounce of energy I had to call out for a medic and just never get revived. Seriously, I wanted to go karate chop each of their esophaguses. Why does that sound so weird? Es esophaguses? Is that right? Perhaps it's esophagi. No, I'm like 99% sure it's not esophagi. And last but not least, the support class. Wrapping that LMG with the ever helpful ammo pouches. No, seriously, they're like, they're really useful now. They've changed the resource economy in Battlefield 5, and now you spawn with less of everything especially ammo. You can regain some ammo by running over fresh enemy corpses, but in the event that you can't run through no man's land, you're stuck to your handgun or your wits. And you know the old saying, don't bring wits to a gunfight. 
So support classes are able to lend allies some ammo through their pouches, similar to medics. And wouldn't you know it, nobody ever threw some my way, either. Instead of the karate chop maneuver, I wanted to strap every support player into a chair and force them to watch the M. Night Shyamalan massacre that was the Avatar The Last Airbender movie. Ung? Ung? Are you serious? You had so much source material! There's also the addition of exotic archetypes. Ooh! Ah, yes, everything is 100% cooler when you put exotic next to it. I should know. I'm an exotic YouTuber. I just felt my internet worth go up by just saying that. The exotic art type that was playable in this demo was the machine gunner for support. You wield an MG42, but you can only hit fire unless you're able to use your bipod on the ground or an object in front of you, in which case it's a laser beam of death and destruction. It'll be interesting to see how all the variants that will be in the game, because each appears to have subtle nuances. For instance, this archetype had an improved toolkit, which allowed for fasting building of reinforcements. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Did somebody say reinforcements? Yes, I know. I'm the one that just said it. But I might have discussed this in the last video, but man, was it fun to only slightly contribute to the heat of battle. I realize they have their time and their place, but I just wanted to build out of the time. I think I know what I'll be doing if YouTube ever falls to the wayside. And you might think the answer involves some sort of job where I'm building things, but you're wrong. I'll just be in the fetal position, crying my life away. <laughs> That's not a joke. Squad spawning is still a thing, and it often meant for me that I was frustratingly yelling at my teammates. And of course, by yelling, I mean internally yelling because they couldn't hear me, and also I hate confrontation, to get out of combat or stop killing so many dudes so I could have some fun too. Or they'd be in an airplane without any extra seats. Or they'd be AFK. Or, I'd spawn on them and immediately regret it. So essentially, nothing has changed with squad spawning. Note, I, I, can, I, I can neither confirm nor deny whether or not there have been any tweaks to squad spawning. I, I don't really know. Squad wiping, though, is now a thing. Letting you know that you single-handedly brought death to a team full of noobs and can relish in their demise as they're forced to look at this proverbial defeat screen. Funnily enough, I was on the end of that proverbial defeat screen quite often, might I add. What does this do? <laughs> well, I'm so glad you asked. I don't really know. You get some extra points for killing them, and if you're on the squad that gets wiped, I think it delays your respawn timer? I know, I know. I'm dropping some knowledge bombs on your face, and you weren't ready for all these factoids. Graphics! Ah, yes. The graphics. Does DICE ever disappoint? As usual, it's stunning, and it runs butter smooth on PC as it always does. They keep pushing the envelope on what they're able to do, and it's crazy to think that there's 60 other... Si well, 63 other dudes. Well, I guess it depends on the server. Anyway, running around in the same lobby as I, googling over the same eye candy. Lane prone has also been updated. Now you can turn 360 degrees while proning, allowing you to adjust in certain corners, etc. That's right, baby. We next gen. Now you don't get stuck on things when you're prone. This is important because it allows you to see your feet while you lay there. And you can either contemplate your entire existence or think about how ridiculous you must look cowering away in your corner. Are these really my feet? Do I even have feet? Am I alive? Or is this just a simulation? Am I playing the game? Or is the game playing me? Airplane dropping is something else we brushed up on earlier, too, and I just wanted to circle back and talk about how cool it was the first couple of times. The sound design, shakiness, graphic presentation, all of this creates a pseudo-adrenaline rush as you plummet below to your inevitable death. Believe me, it is inevitable. You can often try to use this to your advantage to drop behind enemy lines and ambush the enemy team, but since I never got to play on the defensive side, it felt like they were simply playing duck hunt, and I was the unlucky bird. Uh, also, that battle royale announcement, though! Ooh! I know that this has nothing to do with this gameplay, but dang, son! A battle royale on the Frostbite engine? Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. 
I know not everybody is interested, but I can think of nothing more I never knew I needed so desperately in my life. It'll be interesting to see how they execute on it and just how big of a part it'll have in the game and the community. I know some people are sick of the BR hype train, but I say bring it on. I can only assume it's what PUBG wishes it could be when it grows up. I have a feeling I'll struggle a bit with this Battle Royale too, but with the polish DICE has and the destructibility of the Frostbite engine, consider me intrigued to say the least. And that's it for this Battlefield 5 video. Thanks so much for watching and tuning in and being receptive to my incredibly constructive and informative video. I like to pride myself on instilling all of you the knowledge you'll need to make an informed gaming decision. What? 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 Why are you guys laughing at me? That aside though, thanks again to EA for sponsoring this video and letting me get some hands-on time with the game early. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic day. And as always, I'll talk to you in the next one. Farewell.